Southeast Alaska is known for many things. Rugged beauty, abundant wildlife, and ample opportunities to live off the land to name only a few. When it comes to hunting, Sitka black-tailed deer are the most sought-after species in the region. Hunters looking to provide for their families, friends, and communities harvest roughly 10,000 deer annually. But deer hunting regulations for Unit 4, the ABC Islands, may be changing. Recent federal proposals would limit who can hunt, when they can hunt, and where they can hunt deer. This video presents information that all Unit 4 deer hunters should know about the proposed changes and why the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, or ADF&G, concluded that the changes are not needed and would unnecessarily deprive some hunters of opportunity. After examining more than two decades of data, ADF&G concluded that the current deer populations on Admiralty, Baranoff, and Chichikov Islands are healthy enough to allow all Unit 4 hunters the opportunity to hunt without any changes to their current hunting regulations. The department concluded that instead of restricting non-rural hunters, recruiting new hunters from the communities of Angoon, Huna, and Pelican would be the most effective way to increase deer harvest. First, some background. In Alaska, there are two separate systems of hunting regulations. State of Alaska regulations adopted by the Alaska Board of Game and federal regulations adopted by the Federal Subsistence Board. State of Alaska regulations apply to all hunters on all lands, but residents of rural communities may also hunt under federal regulations when they are on federal lands. In Southeast Alaska, all communities except Juneau and Ketchikan are considered rural, and more than 90% of the land in this region is federally managed. Therefore, Changes in federal regulations can have profound effects on hunting opportunity for non-rural hunters. Fishing game supports subsistence harvest but represents all users and works to ensure that rural and non-rural hunters are provided hunting opportunities. The department has a responsibility, according to Alaska's state constitution, to manage game so all Alaskans have ample and sustainable hunting opportunity, regardless of where they live. Hi, I'm Steve Bethune fish and game management biologist for Unit 4. The proposals submitted to the Federal Subsistence Board assert that rural hunters from Angoon, Huna, and Pelican are having increasing difficulty harvesting deer. They contend decreased harvest is a result of declining deer populations and increasing competition from non-rural hunters. Our survey and harvest data indicate that deer populations in Unit 4 are high and stable and that hunting effort among local users is declining. To understand why these proposals are contentious, it is important to understand the Alaska National Interest Lands Conservation Act, or ANILCA, the law that created the Federal Subsistence Program. One intent of ANILCA is to ensure that rural Alaskans can continue their subsistence way of life. ANILCA recognizes that when game populations are low and restrictions are truly necessary, rural users should have a priority over non-rural users. The department supports subsistence harvest. However, restrictions on non-rural hunters may only be enacted under specific conditions and when they are supported by substantial evidence. Now that you know about the proposals and the requirements in ANILCA, let's review the information available to evaluate whether the proposed restrictions are needed to conserve populations or assure continued subsistence use of those populations. First, we will examine deer population information from Unit 4 and around Angoon, Huna, and Pelican. Next, we'll review trends in hunter effort and harvest reported by rural and non-rural hunters and consider whether those trends support the idea that non-rural hunters are inhibiting harvest by rural hunters. It is important to remember that any restrictions on non-rural hunters must be supported by substantial evidence. Since the department is recognized as the primary manager of Alaska's fish and wildlife resources, we are the ones who regularly collect the objective information on deer populations and deer hunting. Each year, we monitor trends in deer abundance and all deer hunters are required to report their hunting activity and harvest to the department at the end of the season. We have decades of information on trends in deer populations and deer harvest effort. This is the best information available. Now, let's dive into the data and take a closer look. 
ADF and G biologists examine whether deer populations in Unit 4 are on the decline. While it is difficult to count forest-dwelling animals, the department uses several tools to monitor trends in deer populations. These include harvest and hunter effort information, beach mortality surveys, pellet group surveys, and aerial alpine surveys. All of these measures indicate that Admiralty, Baranoff, and Chichgoff Islands support the highest densities of deer in southeast and the highest harvests in the state. In Unit 4, deer populations are primarily limited by habitat and winter severity. The islands of Unit 4 have mostly intact old growth forest habitat, milder winters than the mainland, and lack the deer's primary predators, wolves and black bears. Historically, the primary cause of declines in the Unit 4 deer population have been severe winters. But even then, these deer have recovered more quickly than other southeast populations. To gauge how deer fare each winter, the department conducts boat surveys documenting late winter body condition and walking surveys of beaches in adjacent forests, counting carcasses of deer that died over the winter. Following the record winter of 2006-2007, biologists counted nearly four dead deer per mile of beach, an estimated population declines exceeding 75% in some parts of Unit 4. More recently, the last winter with above average snowfall was in 2011 to 2012. And since then, winters have been mild to moderate with low rates of overwinter mortality. Pellet group surveys are another indicator of deer abundance. The department has decades of pellet survey data. Unit 4 consistently has the highest pellet group counts of anywhere in Southeast. And the most recent surveys indicate the population is high and stable. Midsummer counts of deer seen in alpine habitat were conducted on the southern Admiralty Island and northeast Chichikov Island from 2015 to 2018. Admiralty Island had the highest counts of anywhere in southeast Alaska. Counts on northeast Chichikov were tied to the third highest counts in the region. These surveys are another indicator that deer populations near Angoon and Huna remain high and stable. ADF and G also uses harvest as an indicator of deer abundance. Hunter effort and harvest data is reported to ADF and G by hunters. Everyone who hunts deer is required to obtain harvest tickets, which come with a mandatory reporting requirement. Over the past 25 years, the average harvest in Unit 4 has been about 5,750 deer taken by about 3,400 hunters. The 2021 harvest estimate was 6,600 deer. Unit 4 supports the highest harvest in the state, with stable harvests of 5 to 7,000 deer annually. Unit 4 is vast, so we can't survey everywhere or use each tool every year. But taken together, all of these measures indicate that the Unit 4 deer population is high and stable. In fact, following a decade of consecutive mild to moderate winters, we think deer populations may be near maximum capacity in some areas of Unit 4. All indicators point to an abundant deer resource, and none of the monitoring tools suggest a declining trend in any Unit 4 deer population or a conservation concern. The department's data does not support that declining deer harvests in Angoon, Huna, and Pelican results from declining deer abundance. Next, let's examine hunter effort data to see if competition between rural and non-rural hunters is increasing, and a potential reason for declining deer harvest among hunters from Angoon, Huna, and Pelican. All three proposals contend that increasing competition with non-rural hunters is inhibiting harvest by rural hunters. If that was the case, wildlife managers would expect to see growing numbers of non-rural hunters coinciding with increasing effort required by rural hunters to harvest a deer. And after reviewing over two decades of hunter effort and harvest data provided by Unit 4 hunters, including hunters from Angoon, Huna, and Pelican, we found that in the Huna and Pelican areas, the number of non-rural hunters and days of hunting effort by those hunters has remained stable. Near Angoon, hunting effort and harvest by non-rural hunters has actually declined. The proposals contend that rural hunters are having an increasingly difficult time harvesting deer, and ADF and G's data confirms that the number of deer harvested by hunters from Angoon, Huna, and Pelican has been declining. However, to develop appropriate and effective recommendations, it is important to understand the reasons for those declines. And once again, the department's data provides some key insight. 
To legally hunt deer, all hunters must possess a hunting license and deer harvest tickets. So the number of people who obtain deer harvest tickets is a reliable indicator of the number of people who intend to hunt deer. Over the past two decades, the number of Angoon, Puna, and Pelican residents who obtained deer harvest tickets has declined by 25%, 10%, and 60% respectively. Compared to 25 years ago, fewer residents of these communities now hunt deer, and ADFNG believes this decline in hunter participation is the reason for the decline in deer harvest by residents of these communities. Trends in the days of hunting effort required to harvest a deer support that conclusion. Compared to the hunting effort required to harvest deer in other parts of the state, Unit 4 hunters experience incredible success. It takes hunters in Unit 4 an average of only two and a half days of hunting to harvest a deer. In comparison, people hunting on Prince of Wales Island require four days per deer. Kodiak Island averages three and a half days per deer. The Ketchikan area averages five days per deer. And Juno area hunters need almost eight days per deer. Rural hunters from Angoon, Puna, and Pelican report even better hunting success than other Unit 4 hunters. Hunters from those communities report needing two days or less to harvest a deer. The only reason we could find for declining harvest by rural hunters from Angoon, Huna, and Pelican is that there are simply fewer rural hunters than there were 25 years ago. Deer remain abundant. Federal regulations provide ample opportunity with a six month hunting season, a six deer bag limit, and a liberal designated hunter program. Hunting effort and harvest by non-rural hunters is stable or trending downward. We simply don't see an increase in competition, and hunters from these three communities enjoy some of the highest success rates in the state. Anilka describes when opportunity for non-rural hunters may be restricted and requires that any restrictions must be supported by substantial evidence. The 25 years of data reviewed here provides objective and regularly collected information on deer populations, hunting effort, and harvest in Unit 4. Much of that data was reported to the department by hunters from Angoon, Huna, and Pelican. The Alaska Department of Fish and Game concludes that adopting any of the three Unit 4 deer proposals would ignore Onilka's requirement for substantial evidence. Instead of restricting non-rural hunters, the department recommends that recruiting new hunters would be an effective remedy to increase deer harvest in the communities of Angoon, Huna, and Pelican. Current Unit 4 deer populations, season lengths, and bag limits provide ample and sustainable harvest opportunities for all hunters.